right, so again, what I asked people to do was to go out to the P drive for the class and copy over from the in-class folder for this class, the folder called CH09 employee class over to your virtual desktop. I'm about to do the same thing. All right. Hopefully no one had any problems doing that. All right. Then if you've got that over there, if you double click on the folder itself, so double click on chapter CH09 employee class, you'll see that you get this. If you double click not on the folder but on the file, that's your Visual Studio solution file, and that will start up the program. You've got some of the code I put in here for you already. I built the interface for you already, and I put in the comments already. Now, those of you who are in the uh, those of you who are in the Java class or have taken the Java class already, what we're about to do is this. If you take a look up on the screen, we're about to take the same program that we built very early in Java. Oops, that one if you remember that. And we're going to build it, but we're going to build it in C Sharp. Chapter 9 in your book goes over classes. There's a lot of stuff to cover on it. Okay, What I plan on doing, because there's still several people between this class, in this class, and or in the Java class, is what I'm going to do for the next three weeks is only lecture on Monday. Wednesday will be lab. So if you've got everything done and you're not going to come in Wednesday, you're not going to come in Wednesday except for the two of you. You've got to come in Wednesday. All right. So um, this is what we're about to build. And you're going to see some similarities between doing this in C Sharp and doing it in Java, and some differences between doing it in the two of them. If you're not in the Java class, I know that means nothing to you, but I just want to mention I decided to pick one that we'd already done or that many of the people in here had already done. The clear works, I can keep doing that if I want to. I don't know why I would, but I can. And the exit works. All right. So that's what we're going to build in just a second. Now, for yours, no, it doesn't work. In fact, if I go and run yours right now and click Calculate, nothing happens because there's no code in there yet. All right. The clear doesn't make any sense to work because there's no code in here yet. And the exit does work. So let's take a second and look at the comments here. <clears throat> and talk about what it is we're going to try to be doing and then start doing it. All right. So the program says here, write a class named employee. We're going to create that in just a minute. One thing that you're going to notice, that's not a form. When you work in the C Sharp programming language and you create classes, they have no GUI component. Did everybody hear what I just said? Because it's <clears throat> perhaps the most important part of this lecture. We're about to create a class that's going to be called employee.cs. That will have only code in it. All right, it will have no GUI component whatsoever. So unlike in some other languages, in this language when you create a .cs class by itself, which is what we're about to do, all right, there's no code. And that's what we're going to do in just a second. Now, what we want to do, what we want to do in here, basically, for lack of better words, is we want to be able to manipulate that and have the information appear in here. Again, if you just came in and you didn't see it, <clears throat> that's what we want to have show. Now, in order to do that, what we're going to have to do, and I'm sorry, I've got something in my throat or whatever. <clears throat> But what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to create three employee objects to make this work. All right, a Susan Myers object, a Mark Jones object, and a Joy Rogers object. And if you don't know what that means, we're going to go through that in just a couple minutes. All right. All right. 
So, in fact, what I'm going to do for now is just close that one because otherwise I'm just going to get too confused. So the first thing that we want to do, if you look in here, this is pretty much the way yours should look right now. In fact, it should look just like it because I, this is the one I, the copy that I just made. So what we want to do is we want to come up to our solution right here and take our mouse, and there's different ways of doing this. So if what, what I'm about to show you, if you come up with a different way, I just don't want to show you the three or four different ways of doing it. All right, I'm just going to show you what I consider to be the easiest way. So we're going to take our mouse, put it over where it says Solution Employee Class, right mouse click on it, and go down and find Add. And I'm not going to try to go too fast, just so you can all see this. All right, and under Add, there's a bunch of stuff that comes up over here. We want New Item. So we right mouse clicked on our solution. We chose Add and we went over to new item. All right. Hopefully no one had any problem doing that. Yes. You you're what? What does I don't understand. Did you copy it over to your virtual desktop? Then there shouldn't be any kind of problem with it. Anybody else have it where it didn't open? So everybody's done this, I hope by now. Again, we right mouse clicked on our solution. We went to add, and we're going to new item. And then if you haven't done it already, you can click. And you can see this is a way that you can add a lot of new stuff. All right? If I peruse my way down in here long enough, I'll find a ways down. It says visual C sharp class. That's the one that I want to choose. All right, before you do that, if you just go ahead and click Add now, don't do that, because if you do, it's going to create a new class that's called class1.cs. That's not what we want. So after we've chosen Visual C Sharp class, we want to come over here and change the name to employee. And by, def by, by standard, classes always have an uppercase first letter in this language. This is going to create a new file for us in just a minute. All right. So what you'll see, 
over here, if you if you look on the screen right now where I'm taking the mouse and going nuts with it, there is no file over there right now that's called employee.cs. But as soon as I create that and click add, there will now be one, and it's right there. And if you look in here, that doesn't look good because it says class one. I'm going to try to remove it and, and do it again, because if I told you wrong, then I told you wrong. Let's see if I do it over here, if it matters. Okay. That was on me. All right. That's what we want. Okay, let me double check here. Yep, that looks good. Okay, the thing you just created, just remove it. All right, so if you've got that in there, Take your mouse, put it on it, you know, that, the one that you just created, because I had you created in the wrong spot. Sorry. All right. So just highlight it, hit your delete key, and it says that will be deleted. That's fine. Okay. I apologize. Instead of the, uh, right mouse clicking up here, which is what I told you to do, right mouse click here where it says employee class. Then do the same thing. Go to add, go to new item. And the first thing that should be in there, I thought it looked funky, should be class. That's what we want. Again, make sure that you change it from class one to employee right here. I'm not going to hit enter because I've already created an employee class. But that's what I want you to do. All right, let's let's do it. Let's do it again. I'll remove the one I have. Okay. So, take your mouse where it says employee class right here. Do you all have that? You don't. That's 50. Hmm. You know what I'm going to do? I'm starting all over from scratch. I'm going to grab a whole new one because I've already corrupted this one. Start doing that. All right. So are you telling me, I'm asking because I don't know, if you look at yours right now, is this what yours looks like on the side? How many people do not look like that? Just one? All right, then what I'd suggest, all right, if, if that's the case, just close Visual Studio out, remove that, remove the whole folder that I just had you make, just remove the whole folder, and copy it in again from the P drive because it should be on there. And again, I apologize. That was on me for screwing it up. So get out of Visual Studio. Totally get out of Visual Studio. Remove, remove that whole folder that I just had you copy over. Go back over to the P drive and copy it over again. So I am taking for granted now that all of yours now does look like this. All right. Now, if you have the word employee class there, right mouse click on that. Go down to add. Go over to new item. I gave you the right steps. I just had you do it in the wrong place. All right. So under new item, the first thing you should see there is the word class. And right now it says class1.cs. We want to change that so that it says employee.cs. All right. And as I mentioned to you before, I currently do not have anything over here that says employee.cs. 
But you'll notice as soon as I type that in and click Add, now I do. All right? And if you look there, that's what we needed. We, I wanted this namespace. I don't have time to go through this with you right now. But it's, it's the internal naming structure for this. Even though it created the correct class for us, it put it in the wrong space. Since it put it in the wrong space, it had the wrong namespace in here. That would have screwed everything up. I didn't really want everything screwed up. That's why it was much easier to ask you to remove it and then do it again. All right? Now, if you look here, you don't have to bring yours up, but if you look here, you'll notice that our employee class is going to contain four different things. We're assuming that each employee has a name. Now, you notice we don't have a first name and a last name in here, so it would be possible for us to create a new employee with just a first name or just a last name, okay? And we're not going to worry about that right now. The point is, what really happens, I'm being very general, very generic here, but in most programming languages where you start to write advanced applications that have classes, almost always, the class will end up, all right, it'll be the code representation of a database table. The reason I'm telling you that is typically in a database table, you wouldn't have a field called name. You'd have two fields, one called first name, one called last name. But this is the way that Gaddis decided to do it here was, I think, for simplicity reasons, was to just have a field called name. Each employee has an ID number. Each employee has a department. Each employee has a position. So those are the four pieces of information that we're going to put in for each employee. Okay? All right. So with your employee.cs file, with this file here, we're about to build that right now. Now, after we build this, after we build this, if we run the program and we press the button, guess what's going to happen? That would be nothing. After we build this employee class, then we're going to have to come back to this file and add employee objects. All right? And if you say, well, that none of that makes any sense, this is what we're going to do between now, hopefully, and 9. And then after 9, I'm going to lecture on what's in the chapter. The chapter is not a real long chapter, so we should be fine with it. All right, so in our class right here, we're going to come down into the area that says class employee, and we're going to create all four of those pieces of data. I can put comments over here, you know, really, employee's name, employee's ID number, employee's department, and employee's position. Now, some people would argue with what I just put up there, and they would say, hey, with the names you used, why put a comment there? It's pretty obvious what they are. But I'm not going to put a lot of comments in here, so at least I have put a minimum of documentation in here. All right? You'll notice that quite often in C Sharp, in this language, when you create a variable, and it's a class variable like this, so it's right under the word class, you put an underscore before its name. That's just a convention. It's what most people end up doing. Right? So later, when we start to create employee objects, each employee will have their own name, their own ID number, their own department, and their own position. Now, hopefully that makes sense to you. All right? When you create a brand new employee object, we haven't done that yet, but when you create a brand new employee object, what ends up happening when you create the, the employee object is something special that's called a constructor, gets called. Again, those of you who are in the Java class, you've heard this for several weeks. 
But if you're not in the Java class, a constructor is when you're about to start creating or constructing an object, it's a special routine that gets called. All right? And we're going to be able to call this routine in three different ways. So I'm going to literally put in three different constructors right now. All right? So that's what's going to come in here next. I'll just put a comment in here that says constructor number one. And I'm going to put no arg constructor. And if you say, I don't know what that means, you'll see it in just a minute. somebody who's not in the Java class, can you look at this and tell me why that would be called a no arg constructor? No. What arguments do we have in here? What's in the parentheses? Nothing. So there are no arguments being passed to this constructor. So if I try to create a new employee object and I don't pass any arguments, their name is going to be blank, their ID number is going to be zero, their department is going to be blank, and their position is going to be blank. Does that make sense? All right, so you say, well, that doesn't make sense. It will a little bit later, hopefully. So that's the first constructor. So next, we'll write another one. And for this one, whoops, we'll pass in a name. A name and an ID number. And because I'm kind of lazy here and it'll make things go faster, I'm going to copy that in and then make some changes to it. So this says, if I create a new employee object and I pass in a name, take that name, and that becomes the employee's name, take that ID number, and that becomes the employee's ID number, set their department and their position to blank. So I'm going to write one more constructor here. I'm just going to say pass in everything. And I'm going to run out of room, so let me put this on another line. So that one says, I'm assuming that if I create an employee this way, I'm passing in the employee's name and their ID number and their department and their position. I'm not doing any kind of checks on this for validation. Okay. Is that a good thing? It's never a good thing to not do validation checks. So taking it from the top, I'll come right back to this. All right. We created an employee class. That employee class had a string for their, their name, an integer for their ID number, a string for their department, 
and a string for their position. You'll notice that for each one of these that's up here in lines 11, 12, 13, and 14, the word private is before them. That means that I'm only allowed to use that stuff and, and modify it inside of this class. I can't modify it from other classes that I might have. All right, then we made what's called our no arc constructor, which just said zero or blank out everything. Then we said, well, what if we call, we create an employee and we pass in their name and we pass in their ID number? Well, then set them accordingly, but set the department to nothing and set the position to nothing. Then finally, we said, well, what if we pass in everything? Then we're just saying whatever name we passed in, set that to name. Whatever ID number we passed in, set it to ID number. Whatever department we passed in, set it to department. Whatever position, set it to position. Those of you in the Java class, there is no this parameter in C Sharp. There is a me that you use sometimes, but not in this situation. All right, believe it or not, we're about half done creating this class. But now we have to create what are called accessor methods or setters and getters for each one of these fields. So we need a set name and a get name, a set ID number and a get ID number, a set department and a get department, and a set position and a get position. We're not using the same editor that we use in the Java class, and it's done a bit differently in this language. What's happening behind the scenes is pretty much the same thing you saw in Java, but syntactically it's done different. All right, so I'm going to show you how we're going to do all those right now. And we'll do them in order, so we'll start with a name. And I'm going to keep this real small, just normally I'd put this stuff on different lines. but I'm keeping it real small like this on purpose so that you're able to see everything. All right, I don't like that being on one line like that. And what I'm typing in right now, I've got this on three lines, but I'm just keeping it nice and, and simple like this. So I'm going to put a, I'll put a comment here that says name, setter, and getter, or getter and setter, because I guess we did it in that, All right, in that order. I don't need blank spaces here. I did that just so it would look a little bit nicer. But again, on mine, the one that I wrote, just so you see this, I made mine look like this. Okay, each one. But I'm keeping them real simple so we're able to put as much stuff on here because not everybody types as fast as everybody else does. That's the entire getter and setter for our name. A couple things about this. First of all, get. My hope is those of you who are not in the we're not in the Java class, at least most of you, maybe not all of you, but at least most of you are in the database class with Jim. A get is like a select statement. It's like, you know, Jerry walks in the first day of class, I don't know who he is. He says, good morning. I said, good morning, what's your name? He says, Jerry. That's a get. In other words, I'm accessing information from him. If I were to say, nope, from now on you're Bob. That would be like a set. I'm telling them that I want to change. I wouldn't do that to them, but you get the idea. So when you get, you're just at, it's called an accessor because you're just getting information. When you get a set, it's called a mutator because you're changing information. Value, did you notice the word value here is in blue? That's a special C-sharp keyword. So what we want to do is now the equivalent of this. So I'm going to be lazy here. And I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to paste it in. But instead of name now, I'm going to change this to ID number. All right. And I want to return underscore ID number. And I want to say underscore ID number. Thank you. 
You should come up here and finish this. All right. So that right there then becomes what? That's the ID number, getter, and setter. What we're doing is a lot of work behind the scenes so that our regular program is going to be able to use this stuff. And what I want you to understand, everybody just stop for a second and look up on the screen here. I'm going to go back up, way back up to the top. See all this stuff that we haven't really talked about all semester? That's a bunch of stuff that's been written for you already. And because that stuff is up there, you're able to use a lot of things without having to write them. Well, the system doesn't know what the heck an employee is. So what we're doing is the equivalent of kind of like one of these, but our own. And that's what we're writing inside of here. So that in our regular program, we're able to use this stuff. All right, so we have, so far we've done ID, we've done name. ID number, this will have to be a string now. Uh, then we had department. And the last one that we're going to do in a minute will look identical to this one, except where we've got the word department, we'll put in the word position. Now, be real careful when you're doing this. This is one of the bad things about copy and paste. John was nice enough to help me out with this because I didn't change that from string to int. But if you go and copy this one to this one, you better make sure these are department, 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 position, position, position. All right? You want apples with apples and oranges with oranges, however you want to look at that. And that literally... That is the entire, that, what I just gave you, if we write the thing out and we put it into multiple lines like that, it ends up being about, I don't know what it is, it's close to 90 lines. But I saved about 20 lines with the way that we did it. And when I get done lecturing today, you might say, well, you know what, it's on a 1 to 10, I, maybe I give it a 2 as far as what it makes sense. If, if that's the case and you, you are not in the Java class, that's about to be expected. All right, if you're in the Java class and you're about a five or a six, that's about to be expected because, again, there are nuances. There are differences between doing this in one language as opposed to doing it in another language. All right, now the good news is what I'm looking in here, nothing has got a weird color on it, so it looks as though everything I put in was syntactically correct. That's my hope, at least. All right, so I'm going to switch back to the other file now, the one that's called form1.cs. And you may or may not have noticed, you've already got the clear button written, which just says remove everything that's in that list box. All right, because I thought that was kind of a waste of time. You've already got the exit button written because this is basically, this is the exit button that we've been using for the entire semester. So there's nothing new in there. All right. So what we have that is new, what we have that is new is what's going to go in the calculate routine. And fortunately or unfortunately, I'd say there's about, oh, I don't know, 20 or so lines. Okay. So what we're going to do for each employee is we're going to, the first thing we want to do is we want to create our headings up at the top. But after that, for each employee, we'll have one, two, three, four, five, about six lines where we'll create the employee and do some special stuff. All right? So the first thing I want to do in here is I'm just going to say create headings. 
All right, and that's what I'm going to do here. So I know that's a little bit hard to see. Let me move it over. And I think, even if you don't think so, I think everybody in here knows what that's doing. That's going to put name, and then two tabs, ID number, then a tab, department, then a tab, and then position, right on the screen. So if I save this and run it now, and I'll come right back to the program, but if I run it, now what I should see is when I click Calculate, there are my headings. All right? And what I'm about to show you, you don't have to do this, and I, I can't tell you how many of these there are, but the next line that I put in there was almost the same line, except it says list box, employees, employees, dot items, dot add, then I have a whole bunch of these. A whole bunch of equal signs. How many? I don't know. Why did I do that? So when I run it, now with these two lines, now I've got that. Notice I don't have enough in there. I'll have to put in a half dozen or so more. You're not turning this in, so if you decide you don't want the underscores, then don't put them in. It's, it's fine. Clear works. I check that now. And it's about where I want it to be. It's not perfect. It's not beautiful. Oh, Jeff, you got too many equals. I don't care. That's fine the way it is. So all I've done so far is I've created my headings. So I did a list box, employees.items.add, name with two Ts for two tabs, ID number with a tab, department with a tab, and position. And then I put in a bunch of equal signs. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to say here, instantiate, and well, it's a real fancy word, but it, you know, first employee. That means create my first employee. Now, since I'm doing this, please everybody just stop and look up on the screen here. Notice I'm calling employee with no parentheses in it. Or, I'm sorry, with parentheses with nothing in it. So that's going to come over here and find this one, which is employee with no parentheses in it, and automatically it's going to set its name to nothing, its ID number to zero, its department to blanks or nothing, and its position to nothing. Well, I could print it out right now, but it would just print out nothing. All right, it would have a zero in there and then nothing else. That would be kind of silly. All right, so I'm going to put that in and then I'm going to start filling in the stuff. Notice when I type in employee one and I type in dot. Please look up on the screen here. You'll see it on yours also. Notice that there's name, ID number, department, and position. Don't worry about the other stuff. That's stuff the system gives you. But I want to set the employee's name. So I'm going to say name equals, oops, and, uh, Susan Myers, I think it is.
anybody want to take a wild guess if I ran the program now and clicked it, what would show on the screen? What? I didn't hear what you said. Just the headings. Because we haven't added this stuff yet to the screen. So we've got to do that right now. And this is a little bit ugly. All right, so I'm going to break it up over several lines just so you can see it and it doesn't scroll off the screen. We'll see if I didn't screw this up, okay, if this is not now screwed up, and I'll come right back to it, but I'm going to run it, calculate. There's my first employee, okay? So there's, I set in, we set the name to Susan Myers, we set the ID to 47899, we set the department to accounting, we set the position to vice president. So when we set up this in first employee, we used the NOARG constructor, which meant we manually had to put in all that information. That's what we're doing here. We're manually putting in the information for that employee. What's left is we have to instantiate two more employees. All right. So I'll leave that up there. Now, you may look at this, and I, I was thinking about this while I was writing it, but you might say, why did you call it employee one? Why didn't you call it Susan? We could have done that, too. So we could have said employee Susan equals new employee. Then it would have been Susan.name, Susan.id number, Susan.department, and Susan.position. That would be fine to do that, too. All right. But well, we're going to come in now, and we're going to create our second employee. And this time, let's try the second constructor. So let's put in there, oops, Mark Jones. Remember, that was the name. All right, and the ID number is 39119. Notice we don't have an error there. See that? So the system knows there must be a constructor out there for employee that asks for a name and then asks for an int. And if I go back here, asks for a name, a string, and then asks for an int. So it did just what we asked it to do. So now we manually got to come in here and say employee two dot department equals IT and oops. And please look up on the screen for a second. We want to print that. This is this line that we want to put in next. That's identical to this, except we want to change employee one to employee two. So if you really have a death wish and you really love to type, then go ahead and type it in. I'm just going to copy this down to here, and I'm going to change all of my employee ones to employee twos. All right. 
I'm going to save and run it quick just to see if that worked. So there's, whoop, I guess that's a little funky here. Needs another, the way that that's written, it needs another tab. But that's okay. The information is there and the information is correct. The other stuff, syntax, or, you know, aesthetics, I don't really care about that. All right. So clear and exit. Again, if I wanted to, I could add after, where was that? After here, another backslash T, I think it was here. There it is. Okay. So now all that's left is, it was, is to instantiate my third and last employee. to another line because I'm just running out of room here. run it, just make sure I didn't break anything. There it is. And again, I can keep doing it if I want to. That's kind of silly. That shows, believe it or not, that shows I've got a bug in here. That shows that every time I call calculate, I really should be calling clear first. And I didn't do that. That's on me. So you'll notice that when we put in the first employee, since we didn't manually ourselves key in anything, we had to go back in and add the name, and add the number, and add the department, and add the position. The second time that we did this, we provided a name and an ID number. So we didn't have to go back and add those, but we had to add a department, and we had to add a position. And the last time we did this, when we created the employee, we added all of that information. So we didn't have to add anything extra. We could just print it out. All right, looked like this needed about that. So there it is. Now, I'm not saying, hey, did that totally makes sense? Because my, my guess is, for those of you who are not in the Java class, it probably didn't make a whole heck of a lot of sense. But I'll tell you what, I'm going to give you till, I'll give you till 10 after, so if anybody got behind, and I'll leave this up there, okay? But I don't know where people are. I mean, do you need this? Do you want to move down? Or whatever you want. All right, but I'm going to stop taping right now. And like I said, we'll start up again at 10 after 9, okay? And when we start up then, we're going to go over the stuff that's in the actual chapter in the book. So I've got to remove this just so I can stop the run.